Hey guys, it's Megan from Girl Boss Doc, and today I'm going to show you how you can change the colors in your images just using your cell phone. Let's dive in. So first, there are a few different ways that you can do this in Lightroom. I'm going to show you the easiest one right away. So we just come into the color tab here, and then we want to go to this little mix rainbow circle at the top. And this is the easiest way to modify the tone. So not necessarily completely changing the color, but just modifying the tone. So as you can see, I use a lot of pink in this image, and I might want to make that more pinky purpley or more um, orangey colored and I can do that in this menu so if I slide the slider this way I make it more of a purpley shade if I slide the slider this way I make it more of a, a peachy orange shade so that's an easy way to just get the basics of the color modified um, I can try to come in here to pink and seeing if that modifies much but it doesn't it seems to be mostly modifying under the red so I can do that I can maybe bring down the saturation to make it look a little bit more realistic maybe up the brightness or lower the brightness just to get the effect that I'm looking for but as you can see this is really just creating like a minor difference in the editing it's just changing tone as opposed to actually changing the color so sometimes that's okay that might work for your purposes but if you actually want to get into color changing we have to actually go into the selective editing over at the end here so first I'm just gonna reset all the edits that I did so I can show you we're gonna come over to the selective tool and we're gonna click that and then we're gonna click this plus button in the top left corner and this gives us our selective editing options and um, so sometimes I do the circle sometimes um, for light editing and things like that a circle can work really well but as you can see a circle doesn't really cut like won't really fit where we want to color we need it to be a little bit more precise than that so we'll delete that and go to the brush tool instead now you can do this with your finger or you can do this with a um, stylus you can get them at like the dollar store or amazon they don't have to be expensive but a stylus will definitely help your precision if you feel like you could see yourself doing this a lot but a finger works too it probably is just going to take you a bit more time but we're just going to color over the area that we want to change and see i think this needs for the edges i like a little bit more of a um feathered effect so that the color is not so harsh because if it's really harsh you can see exactly where you've laid your color and you'll notice every mistake but if you feather the brush a little bit it's more likely to create a better effect so we'll just color this it's not perfect we could get a bit more oops i just deleted it <laughs> um we could get a bit more specific i want it to erase and you've got your brush size tool, you've got your opacity tool, which is really called flow um, in Lightroom right now. But anyway, so once we've got our area selected, we're gonna come to the color panel and then we're gonna start modifying. So we could do temperature and we could change it that way. I don't know if I love that. Again, it's just for more of a tone adjustment. Um, so I'm gonna leave that as it was, but we could also do tint, same thing. Tint looks pretty good if you wanted to take it to more purpley, but if you wanna really change the color, I don't know if tint's our best friend, so we'll leave that. We're actually gonna come down into this color panel here. So this gives us the most versatility as far as color changing. I kinda like making that brighter. I think that looks really pretty, but our goal here is to really change this to a different color completely. So we could do a green, we could do yellow. And again, this is not looking totally perfect but it doesn't really have to because we can do other tricks to make it look better once we've kind of gotten on the right track so we kind of want to get over to a blue so I think that looks okay the higher up you go it will be more um, saturated and the lower you go it will be less saturated so we want to kind of find that sweet spot I think that's kind of pretty but in order to make it look a bit more realistic, I'm now gonna come into the light option and see what we can do as far as lighting to make this look a bit more realistic. I don't really like this purple area at the bottom here. I think that that kind of throws off the look, so I might just have to crop that out of the photo. Um, maybe brightening it a little bit. 
looks to me it still looks a little bit purple but that's okay because we can come back in later and do more work to it so i might just go back to color and decrease the saturation of that area a little bit i think that's going to help make it look a bit more realistic and it will help get rid of that purple that i don't like at the bottom so i actually think that that's pretty good looking right now so what I might do later is just clean up those edges that you can see are missing, just fine tune that. But we're gonna move over to some of the other spots. So let's go back into selective. We can either um, click that to add more or we can start new. I'm gonna start new because it's a totally different surface. So I might need to do things a little bit differently. Um, and I've already done the pillow before just to practice for this video. So I know that doing the pillow, oops. I know that doing the pillow, I really wanna decrease my opacity here so I have more control. Um, so we'll start coloring an area. Let's see. Mm. Blue is a bit hard to get to after pink, which is why I picked it because I really wanted to make sure that I showed you a good example. I didn't just show you a cop out doing something that was really easy. And then when you go to your own photos, you're like, how the hell do I do this? So I really wanted to show you something that I thought was a little bit more complicated. So I can show you the different steps I might take if it's not looking good after the first round. Because really with an easier color to switch out, this already might be looking perfect. And the, the simple drawing is all that we would really have to do to this image. But I wanted to show you how we would do this with more complicated colors. So this takes me a bit longer to draw because the opacity. I'm gonna go right over these um, uh, lavender blooms because I want those to be a little bit cooler too. Sometimes I find it's easier to color over a big, big area and then go in with your eraser and clean it up that way. Sometimes that's just a bit simpler, but I'm gonna color right over those guys. And down. I also wanna do this mug, so I'll get there. I really have to clean this up, but I think you're starting to see it come together. So let's get that. Let's go up here. Start coloring these guys in. And again, this is why a stylus would be really helpful so you get a more precise um, look. But it's starting to come together. That pillow needs a bit of work. I think that's going to be the most complicated area for me to do. Start making those come together. Yeah, the lavender is coloring quite well, so we'll just have to go back up and clean up the edges. But other than that, it looks pretty good right off the hop. We really just want to also make sure we get these pink areas where it's not necessarily part of the pillow, but it's casting a pink shadow onto the pillow behind it. We also have to make sure we color those too. We can't forget about those little details that are showing through. Your eye will catch it. It will just not look right for some reason. And we'll get the mug. Color that in. So what I think we're gonna have to do here, just because of how the blue's coming out on the pink, it's coming out really, really strong and a little bit fake looking. So I think we're gonna have to add edits to the whole photo to make it look a little bit more cohesive. The cup turns out really well. That colored really nicely. There we go. Okay. So yeah, so far things are coming along really well. The only thing I don't really love at the moment is our pillow here. I think our pillow can still use a bit of work. But the cup and the blanket look pretty sweet if I do say so myself. So now what I want to do is I want to save that. And I'm actually gonna come into the color selection panel and lower the saturation of the entire photo. I think that's gonna help my editing look a lot better already. Yeah, I really like that actually. Other than cleaning up the edges where I've made things just a little bit sloppy, going back in and fixing the, the color parts, I actually think that's coming along really well. I could do a bit more fine tuning to the pillow, um, but I overall think we've gotten that blue effect. We've made the color look, a, the image look a lot cooler. It would look a lot better on a blue feed and we could still tweak the color and the light settings to make it look as realistic as possible. We could up that. We could even change this, uh, the temp and the tint a little bit. If we made it a bit more green tint, we would pull away some of those purples naturally. We could see that might be a bit too green. Let's pull that back a bit. 
yeah i think that's actually coming along pretty well so with a bit more fine tuning we could really get a blue image that pop um but i think you get the hint of what I'm trying to accomplish and I think this would look great on an Instagram feed. So that is how we can use Lightroom to change the colors in our images and I really hope that you find this useful. I think with a bit of skill and a bit of practice you can get crazy good at this and then any photo you'll be able to use for your branding. One of my favorite tools for changing colors is actually Procreate. Procreate is a paid app um, so you will have to pay I think it's six dollars to get the app but it is amazing it is how i add hand-drawn writing to my videos and photos and stories i use it for so many different things but color changing is one of the unique features that it has so i'm going to show you how you would do that if you have procreate or if you're interested in investing in it so after uploading your photo you're just going to click the modify and then you're going to click this little s-shaped selection tool so you've got a few options on the bottom. For our purposes, we want to use automatic. Freehand is kind of where you could draw yourself. Rectangle and ellipse are always are obviously what they sound like. So I'm just going to tap tw with two fingers to get rid of that. And I'm just going to go to automatic because we want it to make our selection for us. Then we're going to push on the screen and move to get more of our um, more of our color in there. So that's a pretty decent selection. We'll see how that turns out. Then we're gonna go to this little magic wand button and click that and select hue, saturation, and brightness. So now we can slide this around until we get the tone we want. So we're gonna do a nice blue. So I love that color. And then we're just gonna lower the saturation so it looks a little bit more realistic. Now we can click there and we're done. And that is like a really pretty blue color. So now we're going to do our mug and our pillow and our lavender. The only problem here is that um, I think we're going to pick up a lot more colors surrounding. The blanket was pretty straightforward because it's surrounded by white. I feel like we're going to pick up a lot of the surrounding colors like maybe this base and this book. So yeah, as we highlight, we're going to pick up a lot of stuff we don't want. So in order to help me work around that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my selection to rectangle. I'm going to select this whole box and then I'm going to use three fingers to copy that. Now I'm going to paste it and it's going to show up in the exact same spot as a new layer. So you can't even tell it's there. If I toggle it on and off you don't notice a difference but you will as we get going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my automatic selection and select the mug. I'm going to try to get as much of the mug that I can without getting other stuff. But I mean, realistically, that just might not happen. I'm gonna try to get, and if all else fails, I'm just gonna fully go for it because I really wanna make sure I get all the parts of the mug. Okay, whatever, yeah, see, we're gonna get a lot of the piece. So, you know what, let's just go for it. Let's just select the whole thing and see how that works out. Oops, we don't want the background. So two fingers to tap to undo, there we go, okay. Let's try to get all the pink parts, all the pillow, all that. All right, I think we got it all. Okay, perfect. So now, again, let's do our saturation. Lower that till we get a nice blue saturation right down. I think that matches. Where did it go? Sorry, sometimes I get a bit finicky. It's so small on the phone, it's so hard. Okay. Yeah, I think that matches nicely. All right, so let's save that as we have it. But now it doesn't, we've got too much blue. You can see that square, but the beauty is, is that we've got the image underneath that still is the same colors. So what we can do is we can come into our new image and we can take our eraser, we can lower that color of that, and we can color back in the old colors that we wanna keep. So all over the pillow, all over this magazine and we can make sure that we color back in the parts that we want to keep the same and leave the parts that we want to be our new blushy color now again this might take a bit of work and a bit of fiddling with the settings of our brush we can go to our eraser and change so i might pick something that has a bit more of a softness to it maybe this soft airbrush here so i can get a better effect with more of a fade so it's not so harsh a little bit more forgiving if i do happen to mess up 
but we can keep erasing away until we only get the parts of the image that we want blue left behind and we get rid of the parts of the image that we don't want blue. All right, well, I know that's not perfect, but for the sake of tutorial, I'm just gonna move on to the final step that I wanna do to clean it all up, just so you guys can see how I would finish this. So I would do one of two things. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna merge that layer down um, onto the original so that it's one cohesive image. And then I'm gonna come into my adjustments and I'm gonna go back into hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'm just going to change the hue slightly and bring down the saturation of the whole photo. Just so we get rid of any last bits of like pink shadow or pinkiness to the photo. And so that editing it as a whole makes the whole picture look more cohesive and it helps make my edits that I made look a bit more realistic. So I just dropped that saturation and I actually think that's great. That looks good to post. I might uh, clean things up and I might change the color of that purple book. That's kind of throwing my eye off. But as far as it stands, I think most people would think that was a blue image originally. The one other thing I might do is take it into Lightroom or whatever editing apps I use, throw a different filter on it. Again, the more we edit the image as a whole after we make the color change, the more it looks like it was always there. Um, so I may do that, I may not, but I think you guys get the idea of what I was trying to pull off and I think it looks really great. Okay guys, let's dive into using PixArt to recolor your photos. Now this is a free tool, so definitely a better option for some people who don't have Lightroom or Procreate but still wanna change their colors. I definitely like Lightroom and Procreate a little bit better. I think they create just a better final product, but PixArt actually does a pretty good job. So what we're gonna do is upload our photo and then come into FX we just wanna select color replace and hover over the color that we wanna replace. So we wanna do all the pinks. The one thing I do think about this though, is that it just kind of is a bit silly in some circumstances. It doesn't do a very good job of picking up just the color you want. You can move these bars, but as you can see, again, it just doesn't do the best job. So what we're gonna do instead is select our color and then we're gonna go into erase. So we're gonna take our eraser and erase all the parts that we don't wanna be colored. If you only have a small area, this would be really easy because you could erase basically everything. And if you click on your eraser, you've got size, opacity, and hardness, which I really like. So you can make it a little bit softer around the edges. Uh, you can lower the opacity. I really like that tool, especially for painting with the brush, because as you can see, if I erase too much on accident, I can come back in and I can paint with the brush all that detail back in. So this actually becomes quite close to exactly what we're doing in, Light in Lightroom when we edit. So we just wanna make sure that we erase all the bits we don't need and we can get a really nice colored image just like we would using uh, the more fancy apps. And again, the one thing I don't totally like is that we can't necessarily choose the opacity it applies the color in the first place. Um, we can lower it as we paint, but that is kind of a pain in the ass. So you have to play around a bit more with PixArt to get the look that you want. But once you do, say we go full strength. So just for um, showing you, I'm just gonna leave it kind of messy because I wanna get to all the detail in a quick time frame. So I'll leave it like that. I know it's a little bit messy, but you could fine tune that and make it proper. Then I would save it. So apply. And we'll just save those changes. Oh, actually, we're going to come back in here, sorry, to effects and then go to saturation. And we're just going to lower the saturation to make it look a bit more realistic. And maybe we'll take it into another app, apply a filter so it just looks a little bit more realistic and cleaner. But that's how you do it with PixArt. And for a free app, I think it does a pretty damn good job. And there you have it guys, that's the tutorial on how you can change the colors in your images just using your phone. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, hey at girlbossdoc.com, um, and I'll be back soon with a new tutorial.